year three. So uh, time for science now. Uh, last week, we left you a PowerPoint to have a look at, which talked through all the different types of rocks as a way to introduce our topic that we're going to be doing for this half term. Um, hopefully you had a chance to have a look through it. If you didn't, don't worry about it, um, because we're going to talk about some of those main things that we're, we're we talked about in that PowerPoint then um, and go through some examples and look at some things together. So we're going to have a look at a slightly different PowerPoint today to the one that we looked at last week. Um, but like I say, it will take you through some of the things that we, we talked about then. Um, so if I can just bring it up for us for us to be able to see. So as you can see from that picture there, lots of different types of rocks that we come across in our everyday lives, okay? So all the rocks that you see around you, um, whether that's when you go out for a walk in the countryside, when you're going into town and seeing buildings and wherever it is, all of those are made up from different minerals. So, you know how I like my chocolate chip cookies and cakes and anything like that. So imagine a rock is like a chocolate chip cookie. Um, if you've made chocolate chip cookies at home, you'll know some of the things that a chocolate chip cookie contains. So things like flour, butter, sugar, and of course those chocolate chips. So a rock is a bit like that. I'm not saying it's as tasty as chocolate chip cookie, but it contains different ingredients. And those ingredients that make up rocks are called minerals. And there are about 3,000 minerals in the world and the different minerals make up different types of rocks. So there are three types of rocks. Now, if you looked at the PowerPoint last week, you might remember some of the names of those rocks. They are quite tricky, the names, um, and we're gonna keep talking about them as we go through this topic. So hopefully you'll get more familiar with them as we go through. So there are igneous rocks, there are sedimentary rocks, and there are metamorphic rocks. So quite tricky words, like I said to you um, just a few moments ago. Now, igneous rocks. So that means that they are made from fire or heat. When volcanoes erupt and the liquid we see when a volcano erupts comes up to the Earth's, um, Earth's surface, then that new igne igneous rock is made. So it's all come from that volcanic eruption that has taken place. So when that rock is liquid and it's inside the Earth, we call that magma. And when the magma gets hard inside the crust, so as it starts to cool down and it gets hard, that turns into granite, which is a type of rock that you might have heard of. So most mountains are made of granite, cools very slowly and is a very hard rock. So there's a picture of a volcano here just to sort of show you. So you can see in the centre, we've got that magma chamber and that magma sometimes will force its way up to the top and occasionally we'll get those volcanic eruptions where the magma comes out and as soon as the magma comes and leaves the volcano at that point we call it lava. So we can actually get granite or um, igneous rock that is formed on the outside of the volcano and sometimes it's formed on the inside and that's something that was talked about in the PowerPoint last week it was called intrusive and extrusive so intrusive means it happens from the inside extrusive means it happens from the outside okay so that's igneous type of rock um, which is one of the types of rocks um, that we are talking about and you can see some examples there some pictures of different types of rocks that are made from that um, magma and lava. So sedimentary rocks is our second type of rocks, okay? So we've already talked about mountains are made from rock. Weather can make the mountain rock crumble. So when there's lots of wind and lots of rain, it damages and it breaks down the bits of rock and it breaks it down very, very slowly until we get little bits that are broken away. So those little bits of rock that have fallen off, they can go into rivers or streams and they get moved along. 
we've got some examples of some types of sedimentary rock there. We've got some sandstone and we've got some shale, okay? Limestone is also a type of sedimentary rock as well. And because I know how much year three loved the Egyptians topic that we did, the pyramids were made using limestone. So that's a type of our sedimentary rock. So what we were saying before, all those little bits of sediment that are broken down, those little bits of rock that are broken down off um, mountains and, and wherever else it may be, they're broken down. And eventually they get carried away and carried away. And then they all start compacting and squashing down together and forming this new sedimentary rock. OK, so again, Last week, the, big, the PowerPoint that you looked at would have explained that a little bit to you as well. It might be worth just having a little look back at that if you want to as well, just so you can see again how it happened. It's still in the folder, we haven't moved it. And then we have metamorphic rocks. This is our third type of rock. So igneous was our first one, then sedimentary, and now we've got metamorphic. So metamorphic rocks are ones that have actually changed so they started off life as a different type of a rock and some things happen to them. So they become a metamorphic type of rock. Meta and morph both mean change in the Greek language. So that's where that word has come from. It actually comes from the Greek language. So all metamorphic rocks would once have been igneous rocks or sedimentary. So what sort of things do you think might have made them change? How do they suddenly change? How does that happen? Well, earthquakes. So if you squeeze your hands together as tightly as you can, push really, really hard, okay, on your hands. What do you notice as you're squeezing your hands together? Okay, so you're really pushing as hard as you can. Well, mine from doing that and pushing are starting to get warm and you feel pressure. You feel that push that you are putting on your hands together as you push them. And that's a bit like the Earth's crust, which is pressing its rock, so it's pressing down. So the heat and the pressure changes them into a different type of rock. OK, so something being pushed down onto a rock or when it's, it's undergone a lot of heat can make it change into a different type of rock. So limestone, which we just looked at, and if you remember, what type of, of rock was a limestone? See, that's right, it's sedimentary rock. But sometimes something can happen to the limestone that makes it change and when it's gone on to go on this change, it becomes marble. Now, some of you might be familiar with marble. You can see there's a picture of a fireplace there. Um, marble's quite a decorative stone that's used in that sort of way. Slate is another metamorphic rock. And it's formed from shale. So it started off life as shale. But something happened to it, that heat and that pressure changed that shale to become slate. And slate is something that we use a lot and you can see there as roof tiles okay to protect um, our house from the weather and conditions that we have so rocks very useful can you think what they're used for well we've just talked about some examples and those last couple of slides there haven't we about the sorts of ways in which we use them fireplaces, roofs, worktops, tables, walls, sharpening knives, headstones, ornaments, pathways, jewellery, <gasps> drawing, even scrubbing feet. Mm, something you might want to look into later on. I'll tell you more about that one later. So what are the properties of rocks? And do they all have the same properties? Now we've talked about this word properties before. So properties means what makes that particular thing special? Okay, what makes it um, good for what it does? Okay, so I'm going to come out of this for a moment and I'm going to explain what your task is going to be for today. So the last question on there was talking about properties of different types of rocks, so how we use them and what they're good for. So in your folder today, um, in the science folder, 
for today uh, for this week's activities you um have been given the task of doing a little bit of research finding out some information so what we'd like you to do is to choose a type of rock now in the fold there's a list of seven different types of rocks some of which you will have heard of before some of which we've just seen in that powerpoint some of which you might not have heard of before but we'd like you to choose you to choose one of those types of rocks and then to find out about it. Now, there is a success criteria in the folder to explain what sorts of things that you can look for and find out about your different type of rock. So it could be, like we've just been talking about, how it's used. You might want to find out about what type of rock it actually is. Is it a metamorphic rock or an igneous or sedimentary? Whereabouts in the world do we find your rock that you're finding out about? So lots of different questions that you can think about. The success criteria, remember, will, will give you those ideas for things that you can look for. Now, also, I've included some links to some websites that you can use to find that information. Now, they aren't the only websites. There are other ones there as well. But those are the ones that I thought might be better ones for you to start having a little look at. But by all means, if you find some other websites, which you think oh, that's a good one, I found some lots of good things on there, then use those as well. What I would suggest is that for maybe today you do your research or you find out your information about your rock and you make notes on it and you maybe draw some pictures or if you're able to, um, if you've got enough printer ink left, because I know that the printer ink gets used up quite a lot at the moment. If you've got enough printer ink, you can maybe print just a couple of pictures. Don't go crazy, but just a couple of pictures um, of your type of rock and how it is used. And then once you've got that information tomorrow, what you could do is then put that information in a poster um, that tells us all about your rock. So you know how to make a good poster because we've done some posters in school before, haven't we? So we know we have to make our information really clearly set out, sometimes little bubbles or little boxes to draw to put your information in heading for our poster so we know what type of rock it is that you're talking about and you're telling us about um, and of course those pictures that we've just mentioned so whether that's something that you're drawing yourself or whether you've managed to print something off okay so all that information use the success criteria to help guide you for what you're looking for and what you can include in your poster and how you can set your poster right so that should give you a couple of, of afternoons because if you do your research well, that will take you a little bit of time just to collect all that together and find that. And then tomorrow, then you can have a go at putting your poster together. And if you're able to, maybe take a, a picture of your um, poster and send it to us because we'd love to see them, see how uh, what you found out and how it's all come together. Um, that would be brilliant. So. Good luck. I hope you uh, enjoy finding out all about the different types of rocks. I think you'll be surprised about um, how many uses different rocks are um, and uh, what we use them for. But I'll let you find out a little bit more anyway. And I look forward to seeing what you've managed to do. So have fun, take care, and I shall ca uh, catch up with you soon. Bye.